Okay, so good day students, welcome to our session. So in this lesson, we will be talking about flowcharts. Okay, so let's first start by defining what flowcharts are. So a flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm, full stop. Now the question comes, what is an algorithm? What do we mean by a flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm? Okay, so for you to define algorithm, algorithm is a step by step procedure. All right, it's a step by step procedure, or these are instructions given to solve a given problem. So, in other words, algorithm is a step by step procedure to solve a given problem, or it's a step by step procedure, well defined instructions to solve a given problem. For example, okay, for example, let's say that I ask you right now, let's imagine that we are all sitting in class and I ask you to give me an algorithm of you going to ShopRite, okay, from uh, Comasdal campus, okay? Now, going back to the definition of, of what an algorithm is, a step-by-step, -step, all right, procedure to solve a particular problem. So, your first step will be you stand up. So you don't miss any step. You stand up, you walk, right? You open the door, all right? You walk, that is wrong because the door needs to be closed, correct? So you close the door, okay? You walk, all right? You stop a taxi, you open the door of the taxi, all right? You open the door of the taxi, you sit in the taxi, all right? Imagine you are you arrive now at ShopRite, you open the door again, you close the door of the taxi, you walk to ShopRite, right? Those are all steps. So that, that, that is an algorithm, okay? So that is an algorithm that we are talking about right there. So algorithms are step-by-step -step procedures or instructions given to solve a particular problem. Okay, so they say that programmers often use, okay, so the programmers, they often use uh, flowcharts, okay, as a program planning tool to solve a particular problem. For example, when programmers are developing systems, okay, so most of the time they like using flowcharts in order for them to solve a particular pro a problem. For example, what, what would be the flowchart of maybe logging in into a system? Number one, you need to enter your username. Number two, you enter the password. Number three, you then uh, you therefore click on uh, submit or whatsoever. So they need a flowchart of how that whole information will work out. Okay, so a flowchart is makes use of it actually makes use of symbols which are connected among them to indicate the flow or if of information as well as processing. So they say normally an algorithm is expressed as a flowchart and then the flowchart is converted into a program with a programming language. So what they are trying to say here, an algorithm, because before you draw a flowchart, all right, before you draw a flowchart, you must have the algorithm, okay? You must first understand how you are going to uh, to draw that flowchart. And for you to understand is, for, is, is by you having the algorithm, the step-by-step -step procedures, all right? Now, after you draw a flowchart, this flowchart is given to the programmers, and the programmers use that same flowchart in order for them to start developing. A, a particular system and so on. So flowcharts are independent of the programming language being used. Hence, one can fully concentrate on the logic of the problem solving at this stage. A large number of programmers use a flowchart to assist them in the development of the computer programs. All right, a large number of programmers, not all programmers use flowcharts, but a large number of programmers of programmers uses flowchart. In other words, there are certain programmers that do not use flowcharts at all. And for me, that's a flow, all right? Because if you're a programmer, you should have something that guides you, all right? Something that should guide you to see how the flow of information or processing will be. That's a professional programmer, in other words. So once the flowchart is fully ready, the programmer then will write it in the programming language, okay? As I said, First, you have your algorithm, 
Okay, let's just summarize it. Just summarize what we say here. First, you have your algorithm. Once you have your algorithm, you use the algorithm to draw a flowchart. And once you, you draw a flowchart, the flowchart is used by the programmers to develop the final system. So that's how it works. You have your algorithm, okay, the step-by-step -step procedures. Once you, you have your algorithm, you draw a flowchart based on the algorithm that you have. Now, an algorithm can already come probably given in two steps already. Uh, and some can come in a, in a format of, a, of a, a case study and you need to fish out all those steps by steps. From there, you draw your flowchart using the, the symbols that we are going to discuss later. And then from there, the flowchart is being passed on to the programmers in order for them to develop a particular system. Okay, so having said that, let's continue. So once the flowchart is fully ready, the programmer then writes it in the programming language. So that we just explained. So the process of drawing a flowchart for an algorithm is known as flowcharting. So that, uh, you know, in other words, flowcharting is the process of drawing a flowchart for an algorithm. Okay, flowcharting. So flowchart is a graphic, it's a graphical representation of an algorithm while flowcharting is the process of drawing a flowchart for an algorithm. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure or instructions to solve a given problem. Okay, so please don't forget that. Now let's look at algorithm. Let's try to understand algorithm more in details for those that might not understand. So just like we say that an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure, okay, well, defined instructions, in other words, to solve a given problem. Now, for instance, the algorithm to find the sum of two numbers. So you might be, you might, somebody might ask you, what is the algorithm to find the sum of two numbers? Okay, so this is how your algorithm will be. Number one, you take the two numbers. Number two, you add the numbers together. And number three, it will display the what? The results. That is the algorithm of adding two numbers. You take two numbers, you add the, the numbers, and then you display the result. That is the algorithm of finding the sum of what? Of two numbers. Another example of algorithm. You might be asked that, what is the algorithm to make a cup of tea? Okay, that's a Darjeeling tea. So you say, okay, Firstly, take one teaspoon of Darjeeling tea leaves and place it inside a teapot. That's the first step. Second step, pour some water. Number three, cover the pot with lid and boil. Number four, let it brew for about three to five minutes. And number five, stain the tea in a cup and serve. So these steps... All these steps that we actually mentioned here, those are the algorithms that we are talking about. Okay, I know some of you probably, I don't know how you make coffee. Maybe, you know, we have different steps. Some of you might not make copies in uh, coffee or tea following these steps that we hear. Probably some of you first put sugar, tea, everything in a pot, boil and you drink. All right. So it all depends on the scenario. Okay, I hope now you understand algorithms and flowcharts. Okay, now flowchart, just like we said above, a flowchart is a type of a diagram that represents an algorithm or a process. Okay, this brings us back to the summary that we just discussed about. First, you have your algorithm. Once you have your algorithm, you draw a flowchart, and that flowchart is given to the programmers in order for it to help them to develop the system, to see how the flow of information or processes will be. Okay, so you can say a flowchart is a type of a diagram that, rep that represents an algorithm. That's also fine and it's also correct. Now, let's try to answer some simple questions. For example, they might say, what is the algorithm of you logging into your Facebook account? Okay, so a question might just come like that. What's an algorithm of you logging into a Facebook account? 
Your answer might be if you are using a desktop, all right, or maybe you are using a laptop or a tablet, okay, or for you to log in, obviously, uh, you might be using your desktop or your laptop or tablet or smartphone, which is Android or iPhone, or maybe you'll be using a friend's computer, or maybe you'll be logging in uh, from the internet cafe or a college campus, etc. So that's how you log in your Facebook. However, you did not yet follow the steps, okay, on how to log in your Facebook account. So that's why they say all the options are absolutely correct. Now let's move on to the next question. Write an algorithm to log into your Facebook account. Okay, write an algorithm to log into your Facebook account. Remember, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a given problem. So you can write your algorithm to log into your Facebook account in simple English as you first go to www.facebook, you enter your email ID and password, and number three, you click on login button. Those are the steps of you logging in your Facebook account. Okay? Now remember, don't miss out don't miss out any step. Like for instance, if you say I uh, I will go I'll first enter my email ID and password and then I click login. Way that's already wrong. You didn't follow all the steps. So you need to make sure that you start with the first step. You go to the link or to the URL and then you enter the email ID and password. Three, you click on log in the button. Then you you will successfully log in your Facebook account. So they say, yes, you guessed it right. It's, it's really very simple and easy to write an algorithm. All you have to do is write the correct steps, guys. Please bold this. All you have to do when you're writing an algorithm is to write the correct steps in the correct sequence. Okay? In the correct sequence. Don't forget that. Now, let's look at the basic symbols used in flowcharts. Okay? Remember, when you're drawing a flowchart, there are certain symbols that you need to know because those are the same symbols that you're going to use in order for you to draw a what? A flowchart. So we have very six basic symbols commonly used in a flowchart. The first one is a terminal. This one here. This is a terminal. Okay. Let me undo that. Anyways, did I just mess up? All right. All right. So this is a terminal. Now, and a terminal indicates the starting or the ending of an algorithm. All right. So when you are drawing a flowchart, a flowchart should always start with the terminal and always end with the what? With the terminal as well. Okay. So we draw a terminal symbol and write the start. So once you draw a terminal inside the terminal, you write start. Okay, that actually indicates the start of the flowchart, meaning the flowchart starts from here. Similarly, when you draw a terminal symbol, write stop to indicate the end of the flowchart. So here at the end here, once you're done with your flowchart, my dearest students, you write stop. Are we together? So the terminal indicates the starting or the ending of an algorithm of an algorithm of the uh, algorithm so when you are drawing your flowchart you first start with the terminal symbol and you end with the terminal symbol in the first terminal symbol that you start with you write in start while in the last one you write in stop okay let's continue where are we we are here the second symbol is called input or output meaning that this symbol you see here can be used for both input as well as output okay so they share the same symbol 
Are we together? So you use the use for input or output operations is taking input and showing output. When you want to display a certain number, you obviously need to make use of the output symbol. When you want to add a certain number or to put something, you need to make use of the input symbol. Okay. The third one that we have is called a process. So this is a process. So the process indicates any type of internal operations like initializations or calculations. So in other words, with the process, it shows what exactly is happening. It shows the operation. Like when you are adding two numbers, they happen inside the process symbol. All right. So it's a box that represents the arithmetic instructions or arithmetic processes such as adding, subtracting, multiplication, divisions are indicated by the action or the process symbol. Okay. And then the fourth one we have is the decision symbol. So the decision symbol is used for asking questions that can have either true or false. Yes or no as an answer. Example, are you online? All right, that answer can only be yes or no. All right, or um, Elizabeth like, does Elizabeth like, okay, maybe let's say if it's a true and false question, Elizabeth like jumping, true or false. It can only be true or false. All right, so with a decision symbol, you only use it when you are working with questions. For example, if Elizabeth like jumping, if it's a yes, go this side. If it's a no, continue. Do you get it? So it, can, it only carries two decisions, yes or no. And then we have a connector. So a connectors are used to connect breaks in the flowchart. Okay, so connectors are the ones that are used to connect breaks in the flowchart. So if a flowchart takes more than one page, for instance, if, because flowcharts can be quite very huge, right? If it takes more than one page, then to connect the flowchart between pages, we can use the connector. Okay, then the last one that we have, these are the control flows. The control flows, they show directions. So when you, if you are drawing a flow chart and you're only using straight lines like this, and then maybe here you put a decision symbol, this is absolutely wrong, okay? Because it does not show any directions. The only thing that it shows is a straight line. So you need to make sure that you make use of the direction flow by putting in the arrows very important because we need to know how is this data flowing okay all right now let's look at the flowchart rule so flowcharts do have different rules number one a flowchart is generally drawn from the top to the bottom the way you draw a flowchart the flowchart is drawn from the top all the way to the bottom there's nothing like a flowchart is drawn into a circle. It does not exist. A flowchart has a starting point and it has the ending point and it's drawn from the bottom, I mean from the top to the bottom. Rule number two, all boxes of flowcharts must be connected with arrows. So this is what we're explaining. So if you are connecting all these symbols, make sure that you are using arrows. But if you use only a straight line without an arrow, that is absolutely wrong. Number three, all flowchart starts with a terminal or a process symbol. All right, so make sure that your flowchart starts with a terminal. All right, we spoke about the terminal, which is the first symbol here that shows the starting as well as the end. However, if you do not start with the terminal, then at least make sure that you start with the process. Okay, so the process symbol is this one right here. But however, I advise you guys to always make sure that you start with the terminal. Okay, rule number four. Decision symbols have two exit points. One for yes and another for no. So this is what we spoke about here. So when you are drawing a decision table, there's only two outcomes, whether a yes or a no. Or either a no or a yes, either true 
or false or false and true. Okay, so there's nothing about you having a decision uh, a decision symbol and you only have one way out. Does not work like that, my beloved. Okay, so those are the four rules of flowcharts. Make sure that you remember them very well. Now, let's look at an example here. Draw a flowchart to input two numbers from the user and display the largest of the two numbers. Number one, when you get a question like this, I'll expect you to first come up with your algorithm. All right? How are you going to draw this? All right? Maybe you take two numbers. Okay? Once you take two numbers, you see which number is greater than the other one. If number one is greater than two, and if it's true, you display num one. All right, if num1 is greater than num2, if it's false, if it's not true, then you display num2. Okay, all right, so let's start from the beginning. The question was, draw a flowchart to input two numbers from the user and display the largest of the two numbers. For example, you take two numbers. Somebody would put number two and number four. Okay, those are the two numbers, all right? So, but you are being asked that the flow chart, okay, you are being asked that you should only display the largest numbers of the two. Now, looking at these two numbers, four is the number that needs to be displayed. So, number one, you start with your terminal. Remember, rule number one, start always with your terminal. Always use the arrows. So, this is your start terminal. Okay, followed by input num1, because remember they say two numbers. So you input num1 and you are using the input symbol. And you input num2 and you are still using the input symbol. So after input, uh, inputting the two numbers, they say it here from the user and display the largest number. You bring up a decision symbol saying if num1, this one here, is greater than num2 meaning if 2 is bigger than 4 if it's true then it should display num1 okay are you seeing that it should display num1 but if num1 is not greater than num2 if it's false then it should display num2 are we getting it? Then it should display num2. This is your connector here. And from the connector, you stop. And that's it. And that's it. If num1 is bigger than 2, then you will display number 1. If num1 is not bigger than 2, then if it's false, then you need to display number 2. Okay? Because number 2 obviously will be bigger. You get it. And that's it. That's your flowchart right there. So you only used how many symbols? One, two, three, four, five, which is your terminal, your input, your decision, your output. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, the connector, and as well as the symbol. So there are six symbols that you have used there. Okay, now let's look at the advantages of the flowchart. Number one is sh it's very short and simple. Number two, these are logical steps. So it, it helps a programmer to maintain unnecessary steps in a program and improves it. Number three, it's an effective communication. By this chat, we can create an oral presentation and can organize a group or individual project with an easy scenario. In other words, if you present this to somebody, they'll definitely understand what you're talking about. Okay, you just tell them we start here and if you put number one and number two, if you come here, this and this, people will be able to understand very easily. Then a scenario that will confuse them. Disadvantages is not suitable where solutions is long. For example, if you are looking for a solution and obviously you take even up to three pages, ah, that's not really suitable. Number two, a disadvantage is difficult to alter, meaning that uh, another limitation is that flowcharts are difficult to alter because if there's one mistake, then one has to alter the whole flowchart. If there's one mistake, for example, when it comes to decisions and all that, 
chances of it being wrong are very high. Okay, so we have different types of flowcharts which are commonly used. We have a workflow diagram, we have yes no charts, we have data flow diagrams, we have decision flows, uh, we have process flow diagrams. Okay, now I'm giving you guys an exercise to do. The first exercise, question one, is to add two numbers, add 10 and 20. As you can see, in this question here, we have already given you the algorithm. So the only thing that you need to do is to draw the flowchart. And then you look at the second question. The second question, also you are given an algorithm, plus also you are given the type of symbols to use, okay? Okay looks like it won't be an exercise anymore since I have the answers here. However, what can I do with this one? We have, no, I'll give you guys an exercise to do. Okay, but I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove the answers and then I'll ask you guys to complete these two exercises and yeah, that's what you're going to do for now, and then I'll give you guys the answers later. So having said that, that's introduction to flowcharts. And um, please make sure that you complete the two exercises just to test yourself if you understood the lesson. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. So having said that, guys, I wish you all the best for today, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Bye.